OK, so looks like we're going to have to change some seats back there. Um, so when you're doing a problem like this, again, you have three different functions. Now, what I would recommend a lot of times, guys, when you're trying to remember how to graph functions, um, looking at them in a piecewise function sometimes gets confusing. So what you can do is think about them as, well, let's write this as like a y equals. y equals negative 3 minus x. Can you graph that? And some of you might even say, well, I still have having trouble looking and knowing how to graph that. Well, think about that in terms of y equals mx plus b. Rewrite it so it's negative x minus 3, and y equals negative 1 over 1x minus 3. Now that's in mx plus b. You can see that m is negative 1, right? Um, negative 1 minus 3. Now that's a little bit easier to graph. Um, if you're going to look at this one, y equals 4. How do you graph y equals 4? Well, if x is equal to 0, what is y equal? 4. If x equals 10, what is y equal? If x equals negative 1,000, what is y equal? 4. four. So y always equals 4. So here's the y-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4. y always equals 4 is actually pretty easy to graph. It's horizontal. If x equals 4, then it'd be a vertical line at when x equals 4. Um, let's go and graph this now. If you guys remember, my y-intercept is at negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Um, and then my slope is negative. So therefore, it's going to be going down like this direction. So I can either say it's going to the right one, down one, or I can say it's going up to the left. And then my last one is another quadratic. So again, that goes here, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. 1, 2, 2, 4. Okay? So again, I graphed, all I did was graph identity all I did was graph identity functions, except this one had a little bit of transformation. Or this one, you know, was a line, but we practice graphing lines. Now, again, let's again just list, just follow the constraints. This one says only graph when x is less than or equal to zero. So again, here's the x-axis. The x values are greater than zero to the right of the y-axis. Would everybody agree with me? So that's 1, that's 2, that's 3. So since these x values are positive, they don't fall within that constraint. So I'm going to erase them. Then this one says, only graph y equals 4 between 0 and 4. But it's less than, right? It's not less than or equal to. So those are now open circles. So between, um, oh shoot, that should have been 2. Sorry, I did make a mistake. That should be 2. So between 0 and 2. So therefore, this is now an open circle between 0 and 2. And that is an open circle. Everything else on y equals 4 is no longer graphed. Is everybody following me? Anybody have any questions? Want me to stop? Re-say something. Good? OK. I'm sorry? So x is greater than 0 x is less than 2. So x represents the function, which is less than 2. So it's to the left of 2, but it's greater than 0, so it's to the right of 0. Does that make sense? Which one? Here? No, the other side. What other side? Here? On top. On top. Yeah, to the left where? Right here. Shouldn't that be here? This? Yeah, but that's for this function, though. I haven't got to that constraint yet. But yes, we're going to get to that. Yes? That was like that. What do you? Yeah, <laughs> zero and then and then less than uh, or x is greater than zero but less than two. Yeah. Zero is x is less than or greater than zero and so it'd be greater than two. So I'm just thinking like that that part of the is like less than two or greater than zero. You mean if there was an equal sign under there? No. Like if it's like yeah, this times the square root. Exactly. So okay. Well, I mean, if it was. Um, I mean, if you had like 0 is greater than x and then like that? Yeah. OK, well, then that says x is greater than 0 and x is greater than 2. So yeah, it just continue going on to the right. Oh, I think you wanted me to put the this one. OK. So like that? Then you have to do the second thing now. OK, 
So now that's saying x is less than 0. So that's all values that way. And then x is less than 2. So yeah, it's all, it would just be all values going to the left from 2. You mean where it's going in like in opposite directions? Like x is less than 0 and x is greater than 2? Yeah, I mean, I could write it in like that. x is less than 0 and x is greater than 2. So that's saying that would look like this, an arrow going this way and an arrow going that way. And that's possible. That's just, that's just not what the constraint is, though. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's possible. You could have that. Okay. Um, now let's get to the last one, x squared, where x is greater than 4. Um, shoot, that's supposed to be 2 again, too. Sorry about that. So then x equals 2 is going to be from here over, but that's, great, that's greater than or equal to, so that's filled in. That means all the rest of the graph is erased because it's only for values that are greater than 2. Sorry, I made, up the, I made up the problem, so that's why it looks. But that's the graph. Now, the important thing is the reason why these constraints work because is this a function? Does this function pass the vertical line test? Yes, yes right? But if you had a line going like that, it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. It's no longer a function, correct? So that's why it's kind of important making sure that you're you know, eliminating those constraints because those constraints allow us to produce a function, but it's just a piecewise function. Yes? So what would you know that it passes? As long as it passes the vertical line test. When you create a vertical line, as long as it passes the function at one point, it passes the vertical line test, it's a function. If you had another line going like this, it would cross the function twice, therefore it would not be a function. Now let's go and look at the domain. Does the graph continue to the left? Yes. Does the graph continue to the right? Yes. yes. The domain is all real numbers. Um, so domain, we can say negative infinity to infinity. The range. Um, how low does this graph go? Negative three. negative 3, which is included. So that's a bracket. Well, negative 3 is a point on the graph. Right? Whereas the other problem, it was an arrow. So it was infinity, so it wasn't included. But negative 3 is a point on the graph. Whereas here, that's not a point, because that's an open dot. right? But that's a solid dot, so it's a point, so it's included. Um, so that's negative 3, and then it goes up to infinity. But yeah, if I change this, if I made this look like this, then that would be a parenthesis. So a little bit of a difference for you guys.